speaking against the motion. Mr. Van Kesteren. Thank you, Chair. And, and I, I find it fascinating that the conversation is moving in, the, in this direction. And it seems like um, within the Liberal Party as well as, as the NDP that there, there's, there's this, this opinion that there's this just amazing capacity for the government and for the economy to have this, this, this incredible opportunity of, of wealth. You know, the problem with, with us today is that we don't read our history books. And China was probably the greatest civilization that's ever existed on this planet. I think one looks at, at their accomplishments. And yet, if you, if you read what took place in the 1800s, it began the 1700s with opium. Opium was introduced, same reasons. Uh, governments became involved. The British saw a lucrative trade there. Uh, there was one prime minister that, that, that condemned the British government for, for, for be becoming part of this, this whole act, but in essence, destroyed a whole society. If you read your history books, you'll find that people began to, to, to lose their, 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 their livelihoods. Um, there were whole peoples, that, the, the, the family unit was, was completely destroyed. Crime and law, lawlessness increased. And this isn't, this isn't just, just some uh, exercise in, in, in trying to, to scare people. But the reality of the situation is this, that we have learned lessons in the past. And it's not for no reason that governments have put together laws that have restricted drugs. Now, I, I just thought it would be interesting. <clears throat> I looked on, on the internet and I, I wanted to see what the drug culture, those that, that use, and I, I, gotta, I gotta confess, I may be, maybe I'm the wrong person to talk about this because I've never smoked the stuff. But I, I wanted to find out what, what people that, that indulged in smoking marijuana said about marijuana as opposed to opium, because opium is, is, the, is, is an interesting drug. Almost without exception, the the response is, you know what, opium's a whole lot better. And I'm paraphrasing. And there's, and there's, there's, there's they, they pontificate, they, they, they go into reasons why and such. The point is, this is a stepping stone drug. This is not, the people that smoke marijuana aren't going to be content just to, and I'm not painting everybody with the same brush, but I can assure you that we will see the same thing happening in our society. And why? For the life of me, would we, you know, even even without proper dialogue, even without thinking this through, this is such a dangerous precedent, and I can't reinforce this enough. It took Mao Zedong, his brutality, to stamp out drug usage in China. Probably 10 million people were addicted to opium. Now, people would say, "We're Dave, we're talking about marijuana." There's a difference, and, and, and Mr. Davies, you, you, you refer to alcohol. You know, it's, it's not the same thing. Yes, it's a drug, to a degree, I suppose, one would argue, but you drink alcohol, or you drink alcohol, or you drink, you might like beer, you might get hooked into vodka, you might, but it's, it's, it's alcohol. Whereas drugs open up a whole world of possibilities. And if we think that we're going to become a prosperous nation, that, that there's opportunity economically with the pursuit of marijuana in our society. We are so sadly mistaken. We need to talk about this. And I am convinced, I am convinced that there are people, and, and not just old fuddy-duddies like myself, I'm convinced there's people in the Liberal Party too that got some reservations. And I implore you, to start to talk to your leadership, to, to stop this, this, this crazy notion that this is a good idea. And, and you know, I, as I said, I was going to leave this for closing remarks, but you open it up. The, the fact that we, we somehow imagine that this whole marijuana business is going to be advantageous, that we're going to protect youth, we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to keep a lid on this thing, is foolhardy at best. So I, I appreciate your time, and I just ask my, my liberal colleagues uh, to, to, to 
look at this really look at this because this is this is a disaster waiting to happen thank, thank you very you. much mr davies thank you well i i uh i know my liberal colleagues don't need me to to jump to their defense on that but i i think with respect to mr kestrin's comment uh, van kestrin's comments there's clearly a very very large philosophical difference between the conservatives and other parties and uh, on the proper way to regulate this. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Van Kesteren wasn't here, I don't think, to have the benefit of hearing the evidence we heard for five days. Um, but we heard a massive amount of evidence about the, the harms of criminalization. And I, I just want to speak to this, this uh, my motion a little bit uh, more pointedly, that uh, nobody's talking about cannabis being some sort of economic action plan for the future. What we're doing is, uh, I'm going to quote Kurt Tussaud again, we're not creating any market here. The market exists. Okay, there's a seven to ten billion dollar market in Canada right now, and that's with a criminalized context with jail terms, and after spending billions of dollars of trying to pursue a criminalized approach to cannabis, where are we? We have a seven to ten billion dollar industry that's controlled by the black market, and our our youth are among the highest users of cannabis in the world. That's what a hundred years of a criminalized approach has gotten us. That's the evidence. Um, so I want to comment.